This week, we're into number three in our series, Our Managing for the Master Till He Comes. This one's the tithing contract. And I want to begin with a story which I think might help us to dismiss some of these rather legal implications of the title. I was giving some Bible studies to a particular gentleman and we were going through the standard pamphlets that you give and they complete things and so on. And then we came to number 23 out of number 24, whatever it was. And it was about tithing and giving offerings and so on. And he said, ha, ah, now we have it. I knew there was going to be a catch as if I had been leading up to some kind of trickery. And I said, no, well, let's read about it. And we went to the usual places, Malachi 3 and so on, and the other material, particularly there in the Old Testament. And then about God loving a generous kind of giver and so on. So he said, OK, I'll try it. So I left it with him. Next week, I came back. The first thing he said to me, this tithing thing doesn't work. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I paid tithe this week and I didn't get anything back. It was as if he was investing in some kind of scheme and that he was expecting to get an immediate return on his investment. And because he hadn't got any extra money from anywhere, he saw that he didn't get any blessing. That's the way he was seeing it, because he purely saw it from a, or what could you call it, a contractual financial point of view. And I had to say, go back and say, well, what about things that have happened in your life? Could you see that any other benefit? Well, I don't know about that. I wasn't really thinking about that. I was just trying to see how much I would get back for my 10%. And, you know, you think, well, it's a bit like a credit card where you get a cash back or something. No, it's not that kind of contract. And so when we read these texts which were given there in Genesis and Malachi and Deuteronomy and Leviticus, 1 Kings and 1 Corinthians and so on, we really need to be careful that we don't give the impression that this is a quid pro quo, the Latin for this, for that, that God is going to give us an injection of cash into our bank account if we pay tithe. No, there are many other aspects of giving that aren't transactional in this way. You're still alive. You're living. You're breathing. You're experiencing God's blessings. I can certainly say that tithing has blessed me in many, many ways. First of all, it helps me to understand that I am not such a selfish person because I'm actually trying to take my money and give it to a cause that I believe in and trying to help other people through my offerings and so on. If I didn't do that and wanted to keep everything for myself, then I'd be a Scrooge-like character and I would be missing out so many aspects and blessings of life. But I really don't think that to call it the tithing contract is such a good idea. You give, God gives. How it works out is not up to me, it's up to God and all the things that he gives me, including the fact I'm still here, including the fact that I have a wonderful wife and family, I'm blessed by friends, and I'm blessed by being able to be part of a ministry that shares God's goodness. I wouldn't have it any other kind of way, but I'm not going to bring it back down to what did I pay? Uh, I don't think that's what God wants. Does God care about this? He only cares about what it does for me. Tithing isn't for God, it's for me and for you. It's to demonstrate things to yourself. What does it say? The cattle on a thousand hills are God's. He doesn't need to have our money. That's not the point. 
What he needs is the dedication of a grateful, generous heart that gives because that's exactly what we want to do.